Yes. Royal X Canoe. It's getting worn out down in the Ozarks on the bottom. Not right. worn out, but from the, running up on the shore. No, just just hitting a lot of rocks going down the river. We have, have a skill. Well, have uh, a skin what do you say from hitting a lot of rocks? Um, you can hit a lot of rocks and do little damage, or you can hit a few rocks and do a lot of damage. It's all in how you hit rocks. Uh, I've got people bringing boats in where the bow has dense stings this high above the water. <laughs> and I said, don't you look where you're going? Oh, <laughs> well, there was a rock there. Well, if it's under the water, in our murky waters, there's an excuse for not seeing. But when it's that high out of, above the surface, I wonder what's wrong with the paddler. But on the bottom, eventually you get enough scrapes and the ABS the strength layer of the Royal X is protected from ultraviolet and that by a paper thin layer of vinyl. And if you wear through that, then the sunlight can begin to degrade the Royal X strength layer, which is on both sides of the foam core. This is the problem with a lot of people who have the nasty habit of running the bow up on the shore so the wife can get out dry shod. Not a good idea because you grind through that paper thin layer. Then when you put it up on top of the car, that worn spot exposing the ABS is exposed directly to the sunlight. And there you should give it a coat of paint, anything to keep the ultraviolet from hitting the material, see? Now, in the old days, what guys did they bought Kevlar skid plate kits. And you take this Kevlar felt and you lay it over there and this smelly uh, resin that they use to glue it on, it's a messy job. And it's kind of expensive. Uh, we've got a new solution for that now. Something just came out on the market. And I, I guess I'm the only one in the area that uh, is putting this stu uh, stuff on. But I've got a canoe in the back that I put it on. You guys can take a look at it. But it's a super tough, thin layer of polyurethane. You peel off the layer, expose the sticky surface, and heat it up and stretch it over round the bend. And makes a beautiful, neat job. And this will take a hell of a lot of scraping like that. In fact, if you have a severely abraded spot on the bottom of the canoe, you can patch it with this. And it doesn't stick down very much, so it doesn't catch on anything. They use it also on the inside, um, on some boats where your heels rest on the floor, like in a kayak. Eventually you wear through where your heel is all the time, and they got little patches of this you can glue on there to take that abrasion and wear. So that that's one answer. Yes? Instead of a skid plate, um, if you use that in a whitewater boat, yeah. which usually that skid plate comes down and it's quite mm -hmm. wide, it's about yeah. almost a foot wide. That doesn't does that come in different widths? It doesn't come that wide, no. Because you'll need you'll need that width. You, you know, can in, get in wider water. material, but it becomes quite expensive. But you shouldn't need it that wide because the thing <clears throat> that you really want to protect is the narrow part of the bow and the keel line. I understand that. Seldom do you do that much. Okay, in, we'll in a whitewater boat. Yeah. Ralph, one, more, one more question. Yes. Under my, under my seat, a yeah. whitewater boat, just from, it may be UV, but it's also probably a combination of that, hitting rocks for 10 years with the same boat and flexing, you know, the, I've delaminated the, the Royal Air. The Royal X has delaminated. And I cut it all off. I got a circle about this big. Uh huh. I filled it in with uh, Marine Tech, which yeah. has been recommended by the vendor. It didn't work very well, but it's it's on there. But it, it cracked a little bit. If I take that and cover it, will that work as well as just covering it with a piece of cloth? Yeah. I would. You can get a larger piece. I would need probably this much width. Yeah. Yeah. I can get wider pieces like that. And you can cover 
right over that whole thing. And if you have enough surface of good material around the bad spot, it'll adhere. That would work. Yeah, it'll extend the life of the boat. Yeah, I've taken all another, the delaminated part off it from the middle. Another week or so of hard use. <laughs> Okay. Yes. What does uh, that cost to uh, have it put on for preventative uh, uh, maintenance? This stuff is four bucks a foot, and installation is very short. Yeah, about half hour or forty-five minutes. It doesn't take that long to put it on. You have to heat it up right here. Uh, only time you have to heat it up. I like to warm it up. Yeah. You don't put it on in cold weather or cold material. But if you're going around a fairly sharp curve, then you want to warm it up and stretch it around so you don't get wrinkles along the edges. If it's a really sharp curve, you might have to be it out and bring it around. Is it best done by two people? It's what? Is it best done by two people? One to hold it and one to... No, you can do it one person. I did this one in the back. Uh, that was an interesting uh, project. It was a Mad River Explorer Kevlar canoe. Typical Mad River V-bottom. Great secondary stability. So they say. I never found it so. But anyhow, the not only was the bow and the stern warped, also the whole length of the keel line was wore through and frayed the Kevlar structure about three quarter of an inch wide. And this is one of the faults with the design of a V-bottom canoe. Because in our shallow rivers around here, many times the bottom of the canoe is scraping gravel bars, sandbars. And with a V-bottom canoe, all that wear is concentrated on that narrow edge, where an oval-shaped bottom a gentle arch. As the canoe goes through the water, those scrapes are distributed on either side of the keel, so no one spot gets severe wear. Makes a lot more sense. And as far as I'm concerned, a shallow arch feels the same to me if I'm sitting upright, or if I'm sitting this way, or I'm sitting this way, because I'm upright on the same arc. So why a V-bottom? they might have a reputation of being a fraction of a percent faster. But are we racing? No. <laughs> but anyhow, later on, I'll show you the one in the back, how nice that turned out. That was really a job. That canoe was in sad shape, and um, the gunnels were totally rotted, so I replaced all the gunnels. I put new decks on, new seats, new seat hangers, repainted the floor portion of it, and the outside was so badly scraped and horrific, I just put a coat of paint over it. 